Today's lesson is more fun with functions. All right, you're gonna need graph paper to take notes for this lesson. And we're gonna be using what we know about function tables and rules and graphing to graph two different functions on the same coordinate plane. All right, we're gonna start with a lot of writing. I'd like you to copy this down word for word. Sometimes the wording of a problem can be confusing when you're not exactly sure what it is that the problem's asking you to do. So copy this down, press pause, and then once you're done copying that down, you can press play again. Press pause now. All right, so maybe the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify what the keywords are. So maybe some of our keywords would be rule is x equals 2y and starting number 0. And then it looks like we have a whole nother rule too. x equals 3y starting number 0. We're going to be making tables and we're going to be showing the first five terms in each sequence. Okay, so it looks like the first thing that we need to do is make a couple of tables. These would be input-output tables or function tables. And we would be using x and y in each of these. So go ahead and make a couple of tables for yourself. So I'm color coding this because if we're going to be plotting two different functions on the same graph, we're going to need two different colors so that we can keep track. So I color coded x equals 2y with pink and x equals 3y with orange. Why don't you grab a couple of pens or colored pencils or something that has different colors from your house and maybe just underline those rules with your colors. Or if you want to do the whole thing in color, that's fine too. Now it's time to start plugging in. We remember from our story problem that the starting number needs to be zero and we need to show the first five terms. So that's why our table has one, two, three, four, five places to write those terms. And here, one, two, three, four, five. Check to make sure that your tables both have room for the first five terms. And since the problem told us what to start with, zero, we can start with zero. Now, if we put zero, one, two, three, four, five in for x, then we're going to be working possibly with some weird numbers when we try to cut those in half for 2y. So I suggest starting with zero for y instead of x. That equation is going to be a lot more friendly to plug in to the function. That way we're solving for x over here. x equals 2y or 2 times y, which means x equals 2 times 0, which would still be 0. We can fill in the next numbers. If y were 1, then 2 times y, or 2 times 1, would be 2. If y were 2, then 2 times y would be 4. Hmm, it looks like a pattern is emerging. If y were 3, then 2 times y would be 6. And if y were 4, then 2 times 4 would be 8 for x. Go ahead and try to solve for x equals 3y in your second table for your first five terms. Remember, the reason it doesn't go down to five is because we're starting with the number zero, and that counts as one of the terms. Press pause now. All right, your table should look like this. Give yourself a high five. Yeah, that's fun to try to figure out how to do. Give yourself a high five if you got that table correct for the rule or the function x equals three y. Now, we need to plot both of these um, tables of ordered pairs 
on a coordinate grid. So draw yourself the first quadrant, because we don't have any negatives, the first quadrant of a Cartesian grid or a coordinate plane. Label your X and Y axes and decide what interval would make sense based on the number of boxes that you have. For me, looking at this X axis, if I look at my X column here, it looks like I need to go from zero, that's my greatest number, ooh, 12 is my greatest number. So I need to make sure that I have room for 12 equally spaced out boxes there. And my Y axis looks like I need to go from zero to four. Hmm, well that's kind of cool. I could space it out one, two, three, four, or I could do a different interval for Y. However, if we're going to really call these ordered pairs, we should just stick to one box equals one. So go ahead and label your axes, not just with X and Y, but with numbers. Remember, the numbers go on the line because the line are the pathway, the lines are the pathways that we travel over and up on. Now I just got to 12 for X. I know that that's my highest value, so I can probably stop numbering there. And then for my Y, one, two, three, four, and we know that this point right here would be worth zero. So that's where the zeros would be. All right, it looks like I am ready to plot these points. So I used pink for X equals two Y. Therefore, I'm gonna use that same color when I plot the points. You should use the same color that you used in your notes for that first rule, x equals 2y. So, take a look at those coordinate pairs. The coordinate pairs are going to show you exactly where you need to go. So, 0 and 0. That means we start at 0 and we travel up 0. Okay, that would be a point that is right on the line. Our next ordered pair says 2, 1. That means over 2, up 1. Finish plotting the points for x equals 2y and then connect the dots. Press pause now. All right, your line on this graph should look like this. Look carefully at yours and it should form a straight line because these are ratios. The proportion between is always the same. And now we can graph our second rule, x equals 3y. So grab your other color, graph that, and see how those lines compare with each other. Don't forget to connect the dots. Press pause now. It should look like this. Notice we are using the same numbers and the same coordinate grid, but putting a double line graph on it. So we haven't put in different numbers in the bottom. It's not like we have two ones and two twos. We're using the same coordinate grid to draw where those coordinate pairs would be and connect the dots according to what function they are. So I asked you to think about this. What do you see between, or what do you see in these two patterns? Is there a difference between these two graphs? We've got one line, a pink line, that's above the other line, the orange line. Why do you think that is? We're gonna need to go and look back at our rule for that. Your task is to analyze this graph. What is the relationship between the two patterns? Do you notice any similarities or differences? Make sure that you are talking like a math pro and you'll need to use two or three sentences at least to explain what you notice. And then part two, what would you predict that the line on the graph would look like if we were to graph the rule x equals five y? And why do you think it would look like that? How would you describe that? So this time, you're trying to figure out how you would describe it in writing. 
So yeah, this is kind of a writing assignment. In your discussion groups when we come back to school, you will be talking about what you noticed, seeing if your group mates might have noticed something that you didn't notice, or if you have the same predictions for x equals 5y, and I might just have you try it out as well. Enjoy! <laughs>